Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. This evening, my guest will be the new District 3 City Council member, Ms. Luana Mayfield. How are you doing there, Ms. Mayfield? I am wonderful tonight. Because we're going to speak it into existence right now, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it's going to be, it's going to happen. Don't you feel it? Yes, I do. The community, every time I'm out speaking to someone new, attending a neighborhood meeting or out canvassing, I am hearing that the community is completely in my corner. Uh, how do you see your services as a city council member for District 3? First, to have more transparency and to be present. That's the first piece. If I'm not present in the community. If the community doesn't feel like they can reach out to me, they can call me, they can email me that I'm not going to be at the meetings, then there's a disconnect. So I'm showing the community now at this point what they're going to see once I'm elected. Someone that's going to be present and that's going to show up as much as possible. How important is that to the community to know that we have a city council member that's available as you will be? I think it's very important because right now, unfortunately, there's a disconnect in some areas where people feel like they hear the same thing from politicians. Politicians make a lot of promises about what we're going to do if we're elected. I keep reminding people first, up to this point, I'm not a politician. I will be a politician once. After you no, know, we look at the elections on November 8th, but the biggest piece is I'm a community person first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And therefore that means I need to be present and hear what your ideas as well as your concerns are because that's what I should be championing when I'm sitting around that council table. Correct. Okay, some of the issues that we have in the neighborhood is now the popularity is rising in population wise as far as but there's a probably an issue with the absent landlord. Discuss some of that <laughs> and what do you feel needs to be done? That is one of my larger concerns mm -hmm. regarding our district is we do have a number of people that purchased multiple properties when the economy was on the rise. Mm -hmm. And there was that idea, especially when you look at the further west side looking at Tucker CG Freedom Drive over the West Boulevard, how close it is to uptown. So you had a lot of people that came in and purchased properties with the idea of doing some maybe minor renovations and then selling those properties at a higher cost. The problem that happens on the back end is those properties are not being maintained all the time. There's concerns where you have less than desirable neighbors that move in that don't really have a sense of what community looks like with maintaining the properties, making sure that we keep crime down in the community, making sure that they are a responsible neighbor. When you see crime or see the opportunity for crime, making sure that you're calling 911, making sure you have a relationship with your neighbors. We have homes that are boarded up. We have homes that haven't been boarded up, so therefore there's a lot of vandalism, and you have possibly vagrants that are living in them, and that's hurting the homeowners and the other renters in the community that are trying to bring something positive. Hmm. Okay, um, I forget, I forgot to ask, um, you said District 3, how far does it go? Where does it go? District 3 is actually a really diverse district. Mm -hmm. You can look at it in one example from Tuckasegee all the way out to Steel Creek. Okay. Or you can look at it from South Boulevard on the west side going back as far as Morris Chapel Road. Mm -hmm. So the district is a very diverse district with more than 65,000 registered voters. So that's not including those voters that are not registered or not old enough to register or unable to register for whatever reason, then there's probably more than 73,000 very distinct individuals that's throughout t the area. And it can take me on a good day anywhere from 40 to 45 minutes to travel from one end of the okay. district off of Morris Chapel all the way out to Steel Creek. Mm. Okay, I know we talked about the absentee landlord, but how about the businesses that are being abandoned or I mean may not be by not being used. 
we definitely have opportunities for growth. Mm -hmm. The turnaround for our economy right now really is going to fall in the hands of small business. Mm -hmm. Our mayor and our members at large have had some really good discussions, especially the last few months, about creating opportunities for small businesses to have access to loans so that they can start a business that's going to be a viable business. Mm -hmm. The other reality is we need to make sure that we're developing the workforce that's going to be able to service that business. Mm -hmm. Right now when we look at the shift and we're looking at green technology and we're looking at the opportunities with AT&T, for example, you have organizations like the Urban League and Goodwill and so many others that are providing training for the next generation of jobs. The question now becomes, in my role, how do I make sure that the community, not only our young people, but as well as our seniors, that are still very active, but don't necessarily feel that they have a place right now, that they're connected to these trainings so that they can be prepared and creating those mentor type relationships to help people to identify maybe there's a partnership opportunity here where two groups that are doing similar work or work that can complement each other can join together and apply for one of the grants that the city may offer in order to start a small business to start diversifying what our workforce looks like. Being new to, I guess, um, the political area, what would you bring to the table as a city council member? Advocacy, my commitment and my love for my community. Prior to stepping into this arena, for more than 15 years, I have been an advocate in the Charlotte area on multiple issues of equity and equality and sit on a number of boards and commissions. I have maintained a direct connection to the public and to the community. I have built some really strong relationships and have made a lot of new relationships during the campaign Correct. trail to make sure that the community's voice is heard so that when I'm sitting around that council table and when we are having discussions about ordinances or we're looking at potential growth, my commitment to District 3 and to the citizens of the city of Charlotte is to make sure that District 3, okay, while we're looking at growth on the east side or on the south side, what does that look like over here for the southwest corridor? Correct. What type of growth and opportunities are we looking at? There are some things coming down the pike that have already been mentioned by several people that I've spoken to in the planning department but I need to see those opportunities moving further into town mm -hmm. so that you can see the same growth when you're driving through West Boulevard, Correct. when you're driving through Wilkerson, when you're driving up Freedom Drive, you're starting to see those changes where growth is happening and the community is going to support that as long as the community has an opportunity to share their views and their ideas about what this is going to look like. But all the uh, community services that you have been involved in, which is a, a great deal, and I applaud you for that, what one would you consider to be the most, you know, the, the best for you? I mean. You know, honestly, I can't pinpoint one. Mm -hmm. Every opportunity that I've had in the community have been things that I've been passionate about. Being a member of the Charlotte Community Justice Coalition, working to help the rights of those that have been formerly incarcerated and trying to get their lives back on track, that's important. It's important as a citizen, it's important as a homeowner, it's important as a neighbor that I do whatever I can to make sure others have as many opportunities as possible working with the immigrant community, whether it is the African or the Latino community, because for me, it really does fall down to equity and equality. As human beings, we all have rights. When we have discussions of, regarding the immigrant community and we use the word illegal, 
where there's no such thing as an illegal human being. Sure. You may be documented or undocumented, but there's so many other conversations that need to happen. It's not as black and white as what we think that as individuals that it is. So if there's an opportunity for me to identify and connect people to resources, that's what I've wanted to do. And it's hard to pick one piece out of all the work serving during Hurricane Katrina and Rita was an amazing opportunity to have direct contact with people and help make a difference. Being on city council will be my greatest role because I will have a larger impact but my commitment is to make sure that I let service lead me when I'm having discussions with the business community and with the consumer community to say, okay, how can we make this a win-win situation? Because everyone's not necessarily going to walk away with 100% of what you want, Correct. but let's get this as close to a win-win as possible. And I'm just looking forward to working with the other members on council and collaborating to help grow our city. I wonder, what prepares you the most to serve as a city council member? Volunteering, honestly. Being a volunteer and knowing that we can't just sit around and expect for society to prepare all of these things on a plate to just give to us just because we want it. At some point, individually, we need to contribute sure. to the creation of it, whether that's donating money, donating time, whether it's an hour or two hours a month, that makes a big difference in what society is going to look like. But unfortunately, it is very hard to identify enough volunteers for all the different services that are needed. Our community is hurting. What does that look like? It looks like unemployment. It looks like having higher crime in some areas, even though our police chief has done an amazing job sure. with reducing the amount of crime that we have throughout the area. But if people are not working, if they're not trained, if they don't have access, if they did not graduate from school or receive some type of trade, then they're going to be more likely to commit a crime. So as a community, we need to step up and do something different. And I believe that commitment of wanting to see something better opposed to talking mm -hmm. about something better has prepared me to go in and have real conversations with a diverse perspective when looking at how we can grow the city of Charlotte. Okay, being a new, as new as you are, please tell us a little bit about Lawana Mayfield. I mean, because we got to first know Yes. Lawana Mayfield. I mean, especially at this stage because you're going to increase because God has a plan for you. One, I said yes a long time ago, thankfully. And on the other side of a yes, you just, I don't honestly believe that I could have dreamed big enough mm -hmm. for, to know, to prepare for this step. So about me, my father passed away when I was 13. My mother passed away when I was 15. I was out on my own by 17. I have worked almost all of my life. I received my first job probably six months after my father died, thankfully, in my junior high school because my assistant principal was fishing buddies okay. <laughs> with my father. So he allowed me to work in the school cafeteria. So my first job was learning bookkeeping and learning numbers and accounting and finance. So that led me to have more than 20 plus years of finance accounting experience on multiple levels. And I, in my early 20s, I would say about 23, 24 is when I first started volunteering. And I realized that that was a gift that I had to help others because of my circumstances I don't really allow for too many excuses. So I believe that people should have a moment to visit in that place and give yourself time to mourn whatever that is, but you do not get to move in. Your next step is, okay, what can I do to make either my life better or make someone else's life better? For me, I found more 
joy and received a lot more blessings and doors open when I chose to let my service be towards other people and not focus on me because I have had an amazing life outside of what the beginning was. That foundation was there and I have never had a time where God did not place an amazing person in my life. So I saw firsthand, not what charity looks like, but what community looks like. When you lost your mother and your father, I mean, at such an early age, how were you able to deal with that? And what encouraged you to move on? I would say, reflecting a lot of people when I was younger, there were times where I didn't know what the next step should be. Only thing I knew is I had to put one foot in front of the other. I am so thankful that when I look back over my life, drugs were never a part of my life. Alcohol was never a part of my life. I have a lot of friends where I have celebrated their anniversaries from them being sober or clean from whatever possible addiction they may have had. And when I've attended their birthday celebrations, I can relate to a number of the concerns and the issues that they may have had during that time. But the idea of checking out just was never there. I just assumed this was life. You just deal with it. Whatever happens, you just go along. I was never in a position where I didn't have a roof over my head. I was never in a position where I wasn't in a job that created opportunities for me to grow and to move up and to learn more. But what I did realize is when I speak to young people now and have them share their concerns with me, I'm able to relate to a lot of them and to help them see you know what, you don't have to use this as an excuse. Just because my mother passed away, that doesn't mean I get to do whatever I want to do. Just because my father passed away, that doesn't mean that society or the world owes me anything. There's a responsibility that I need to take, but also that responsibility wasn't just me alone. Because I had amazing people that were being placed in my life at different times that I needed them to help guide me with a lot of the questions that I had that I would believe that those would be things that you would talk to your mother about or you would talk to your father about when you turn 18 and 21 and different milestones in your life. I've always had some amazing elders in my life that, were, that would come in at the right time to help guide me. So I feel like that is my responsibility now when I look back and speak to college students and students in elementary school. As far as your parents, what is one of the most important thing that, you that, you, that they've taught you that you still carry on today? To because love. I never knew a day that I was not loved. Even though they did pass away when I was in junior high school and going graduating into senior high school, there was never a day that I did not know that I was wanted and that I was loved. I was still too young, I think, for my parents to have discussions about who I was going to be when I grow up. So with everything that I have tried to do and that I'm doing now, my prayer is that when they're looking down, they're proud of the product that they see today. That's all I can really hope for, but that's what I strive to do. I strive to make them proud so that one day when the time comes for us to see each other again, that I know that I'm gonna be greeted with joy because they're able to look down and say, look at our baby, look at what she was able to do. So while I'm here, I need to make sure that my path is a legacy in a positive way, not to disrespect others, not to hurt someone else, but to make sure that you as an individual have your voice.
And if there's a concern or an issue, if I have the connections or I have the opportunity to connect you to who can help you with that situation, then that is my responsibility. I can't take the knowledge with me. I can walk out of here today and walk into my car and something can happen and I can be gone in an instant. That knowledge that I've accumulated should not go with me. So any opportunity that I have to connect someone, to share information, to create an introduction, that's what I try to do. Seeing all that you've come through, I know your parents, they're proud of you. As far as for the community, I mean, that shows a lot with all that you've gone through to see that where you're at right now, what you can do and what where you're going to be going. You know, what you can do for this district is awesome. That's what I hope. I hope. I mean, everyone doesn't necessarily know my story. So for the viewers that will be watching, they will, will learn a little more about me because I do not spend a lot of time talking about me. I'm more concerned about how I can help someone else and how I can <clears throat> excuse me, connect someone else. That's my focus. So I don't spend a lot of time talking about what I've done. I really hope that my work will speak for itself and that people would see that and recognize that, you know what? If she was able to do it, I think I could start this business. I think I can become a professor. I could become a teacher. I can do whatever it is that I should or want to do, because if she can do it, why can't I do it? And especially for those young minority children and for those young minority sisters, so that they know there's an opportunity for you to be whatever you want to be. What separates you from the other candidate? I don't really know a lot about the other candidate, to be perfectly honest. I can only say that when I look at the idea of what does smart economic development look like for my community and looking at small business being the key to that <clears throat> and looking at how we are going to grow our economy and when I look at strong community safety and creating relationships and neighborhood block parties, having the communities come together and apply for a matching grant to help bring in sidewalks if that's what they need, to help clean up the park if that's what they want so that the youth will have access to a place where they can be comfortable and they can be safe. My focus is on the community. I don't really know what my opponent would like to see for the community. I just know with the conversations that I've had, our seniors do not have a senior center in some areas they need to have the same opportunities to be a part of the growth of the city of Charlotte, <clears throat> excuse me, as our young people do. Correct. That's what my focus is, is what can I bring to this process and making sure that I am as knowledgeable as possible about as many of the concerns and many as many of the opportunities that we have in the district and making sure that District 3 is highlighted for what an amazing area that we really are. We really are a jewel in the city. As a new city council member, what would be your, would be your first objective? My first objective is to make sure <clears throat> that I am as, a, as knowledgeable mm -hmm. about the opportunities that we have as possible. I'm not going to make promises to the community that I can't keep. Correct. What I want, what I've already started doing, is having conversations with members in our different levels of city staff to talk about what opportunities do we have on the horizon. I've already started having conversations with potential businesses to look at District 3 a little differently when we're looking at some areas, some businesses are having to relocate from other areas of town. Let's have a conversation about District 3. There is no one issue that I'm going to be tackling. I'm still working with the community to find out 
what are the major concerns? Because again, when you look at the community from Tuckasegee all the way out to Steel Creek, we have some concerns that are connected and similar, Correct. but we have a lot of concerns that are very individual to that neighborhood. So I need to make sure that the community is connected, that they are talking to each other, and therefore creating the foundation that I need so that I can sit at that council table and make sure that I'm making, that I'm addressing the concerns that are the overarching concerns and not just me as an individual <clears throat> being upset because I see something on my block. Mm -hmm. I need to expand that conversation to the 10, 15 blocks around me and see if other people are having that same concern. And then I need that community to come out at the council meetings. I need you to talk to me. I need you to reach out to me. Mayfield, we're running out of time. I really appreciate you coming on the show. And one short, how important is it for that community to get involved? <clears throat> we're the ones that need to make the difference. When the community is involved and the community has a voice, you create a community. Mm -hmm. There is a difference. So people need to know what is a community is what you make it. Thank you, Ms. Mayfield, for coming on the show. The new District 3 City Council member, Ms. Thank you. Luana Mayfield. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, I, I appreciate you watching the show. Join my website, www.paulmbrown.webs.com. You also can find me on YouTube. I have guests like Ms. Mayfield that comes on the show that educate us into what's going on in the community. We, we need to reach out and help each other out because we have an awesome city and we have individuals like Mayfield that comes in to just want to make us be a better community. So let's reach out. Until we meet again, be encouraged.